Hey y'all, welcome back to Wonderful Acts. My name is Alyssa Denae, and today I have my best friend, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Tawana, but y'all know Tawana. Tawana's been <laughs> on the channel before, and Tawana is back because Tawana has a life update. Hello, if you notice, her last name is a different last name. This is Mrs. Bone. Hey. Okay. Hey. hey. <laughs> So the last time we had Tawana on, Tawana was engaged and mm -hmm. now she's married. So we're going to talk to her about just everything that's happened and how God has just been so faithful in the midst. Tawana is an author. She is a destiny coach. She is a mortgage loan officer. She is a wife. And I'm so honored to have you back on my channel. Uh, so Tawana, tell us like... How oh well, I, I want to jump into how how's married life, but before I do that, I don't you know y'all gotta stay for part two of the the video, but let's just pick up with the wedding planning process. Yes. Um. Okay. Like one, the process was so beautiful. So guys, like I do not like I was in I've been in such a chill space. Like right before my engagement. I might have shared that I had moved from DC and I moved to Detroit. So I moved back home and I had, I was in a, maybe about a year and a half of a sabbatical. And so I was in, the Lord had been training and teaching me about rest and stillness in him. And so I had just been in such a place of not wanting any stress. I didn't want too much complication. Like I was just like, I knew that like, I had to be in a place of peace in a place of stillness, even in the midst of wedding planning. And so there were so many different things that I was hearing about planning a wedding. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so stressful. Mm -hmm. You know, every time the bride, get, you know, you come to the wedding and the bride doesn't, you know, just wants the day to be over. Every single bride that, that you know is stressful. I mean, it's stressed out throughout the process. So you hear so many things and I had actually been in tons of weddings leading up to my own. And I had seen a lot of my friends, a lot of the people whose uh, wedding parties I was a part of be, be so stressed out throughout the process. So it was just something that I did not want. I did not want to experience. I knew I did not have the capacity for stress because of the place that the Lord had called me to be in. So I started to pray. I started from the, from the beginning. I said, before I even start planning, Holy Spirit, take over. Mm -hmm. Show me the things that are important. Show me what's, what my focus should be so that you're honored and you're glorified throughout the entire process. Mm -hmm. And so that was my focus. Before I started planning, I wanted to start there. What are the things that are important to me? I had the conversation with Tafor. What are the things that are important to you? So that we can actually take those things and submit it to the Lord and say, this is what our focus is going to be. We're not going to get caught up in all of the other things that may not be as important. And so those so things. From the to... beginning, you were mm -hmm. literally like, I'm not going to be stressed. Yep. I'm going to stay in a place of peace. Absolutely. And the very first thing you and Tafor decided to do was just pray and get on one accord. Absolutely. It was like, let's, let's see what is important. Like, let's see what's important to the heart of God because a union coming together is to the glory of God. So is what is this, what is this part supposed to look like in a way that's going to bring glory to the Lord? And so we said, okay, the things that are important is that Jesus is glorified, mm -hmm. that people really encounter God and that we just have fun, that we just celebrate with people and have a good time with our people. And so from there, it was like, okay, you know what? The things that were not on that list, all the decorations, how the invitations were going to look, what everything was going to look like was not on the list. So anything that came up that was contrary, that caused me to put so much attention and focus on outside of those things, I decided to release it and let it go. It's not that important. Mm -hmm. And so I'm telling you, like, the Lord honored yes, he this did process i mean i mean from start to finish we didn't have that much time i think we had what was it like four months i think it was like about four months that we had to plan <laughs> it out. i don't know but it was it was fast it was not a lot of time yeah and it didn't feel that way it was i mean even from the even from choosing the bridesmaid and the wedding party that was something that was i was very serious about holy spirit 
who am I, who is called to actually walk with me down the aisle? Who is called to stand with me as I say yes to the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with? And I, I didn't even lean on my own understanding when it came to who was going to be a part of my bridal party. I prayed and the Holy Spirit confirmed in my spirit who the people were that were supposed to be at my wedding party. Um, so it's, it was just so divine, so beautiful, the entire process. And, and the Lord kept me in peace. Like, mm. I probably was one of the most chillest brides that I had ever, you know, experienced, <laughs> that I had ever experienced. Yeah. And it was and it was to the glory of God, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. there was no way that, that I could have remained in the place of peace had it not been for the Lord. And, like, really choosing. Like, I made a choice. Mm-hmm. I decided that I was not, I was in order for me to honor God, I cannot be worried and stressed out and allow myself to get like weighed down with things that really didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love how you said like you had to make that choice because there were some things that came about during the Mm -hmm. wedding planning process Mm -hmm. that you could have let stress you out. So how did you, when you did experience those obstacles or those things that again kind of presented themselves to say here's an opportunity for me to carry mm-hmm. my feelings <laughs> how did you recenter and stay focused yeah there were there were opportunities there were different like it you hear the thing about family right and like you know how that's like one of the biggest stress points when it comes to planning a wedding and it's people have like such strong feelings about what they, what they think you should do or how they feel like things should be. One of the things that I did, I let people know that like I cannot be stressed out. I would have a conversation. I would tell people, don't stress me. That was like my, I would say that would be my life. That was my favorite quote throughout my entire, don't stress don't me. Stress <laughs> don't stress me. And so those moments, honestly, I think that I I took it captive immediately. I went to the Lord with whatever the emotion was, and I decided that I wasn't going to leave that moment with the Lord with that thing weighing on me. So I literally released it. Like when they say, cast your cares unto him because he cares for you. That's really what I had to do was I had to literally, any opportunity that came, I threw it back at the Lord. Like, okay, no, like I am refusing to, and when I say threw it back at, the Lord did not throw it at me, but what I did was I cast that thing, so anything that, that tried like to practically like for somebody who's like, how do I cast it unto the Lord? That's a really good question. Honestly, I kind of picture myself so I can be pretty practical in ways. Mm-hmm. I would picture myself almost like if you were to take a, sh- a, uh, a sheet of paper and I would imagine myself throwing it with, with whatever that stress was, that, that thing of that was weighing me down. I would literally write, I would literally imagine myself writing it and literally tossing it to the Lord. Like, okay, I will not hold on to this. Like, I will not worry about this. So that's one of the practical ways, but really it's prayer. It's kind of releasing it to the Lord. It's father, like this has upset me. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be stressed out. I know the word that you have given me to remain in peace, but this thing is really bothering me. Mm-hmm. I ask Holy Spirit that you would remove the stress from me. I ref- I li- I'll tell the Lord, I refuse to be worried. I refuse to stress. Like I, I, I make a decision right now to keep my mind stayed on you. And mm-hmm. your word says that when I do that, you will keep me in perfect peace. So mm-hmm. Father, I release this to you. Mm-hmm. I surrender this to you. And Holy Spirit, give me peace that surpasses all understanding. It will look like that. Like that's how I would have a conversation with the Lord. I'll see myself like, writing it on a piece of paper, balling it up, casting it and going on about my day. I see when I, when I do that, I literally, like if I have a negative thought, I literally will, I go like this, like I literally Mm. like grab it. I like grab it in the air and kind of like, it's just like, and I like like throw it away. And like you said, replacing that negative thought or that negative emotion with what the word of God says Amen. Um, about me or my, my circumstances or my situation. So something that I think that um, our listeners, the wonder fam can take away is to just be in the word, to know the word, to know the scriptures and to apply them. And when they're Amen. Those thoughts captive. So how did to four, how was he in the whole process? <laughs> like your, you know, your, your fiance at the time, like how was that? planning something so big together with your significant other yeah that's also a really good question because 
it's funny that he actually cared about some of the a lot of the things that you wouldn't think that men would care about like you know he was he was probably a I did most of the most of the planning um, because that's my strong suit. I was used to planning events and things like that. So it was easier for me to actually plan things out. And I had a lot of the connections. I was in Detroit at the time. And so the wedding was in Detroit and he was out of town. So a lot of the planning kind of fell on me or I took it. I took it upon myself to do a lot of the planning because it was just I had the grace to do it. Mm -hmm. But for him. Honestly, I think that he was just like a really great support. Like anything that was anything that was like way weighty for me to carry, or I would feel like, okay, this thing could cause me stress. He would take it on. So, and I was very communicative with him about it. He knew, like I, he knew that my commitment was that I would not be stressed out. I would not allow us to do things that would be stressful, but that we're going to like flow in like the peace and the grace of God throughout the entire process. And so anything that came up with family or people's ideas or whatever, that was, that would cause me stress. I would instantly tell him, I would tell him about that, mm -hmm. you know, like, Hey, this thing is coming up. We can only have this amount of people, but now family may be requesting other people, you know, maybe requesting more people to come. Like, let's figure this out. Let's do something about it. So he was actually really, really good at like protecting my peas mm -hmm. by like taking things on that would potentially cause me to be stressed out. So he was just like a great support. Go to four. I love to four. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so was there anything that you guys disagreed about like in the planning process and how did you work through that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Listen, she she's asking the people want to know. They want the real. Listen, listen, that's a, that's <laughs> the, it's so funny because from the jump, right? Because I honestly could have been okay with like a destination wedding of a small amount of people. Now that's laugh. Anybody that knows me would probably laugh at that because I know a lot of people and I love a lot of people and it would have been hard to do that. However, I just, again, in the vein of peace and rest and ease, I wanted something very small, not even, I wouldn't even say very small. I would have said maybe 150 people, fine. Mm -hmm. Funny part about it is I think my guest list was probably 150 people alone. Like it was very hard for me to, to kind of, you know, but anyway, <laughs> he actually <laughs> he actually wanted a bigger wedding like he wanted more people i wanted i wanted a you know as least a least amount of people as possible he wanted as many people as possible and so i think that was probably the guest list was probably like the number one thing that we actually like struggled with at the beginning like you know hey this amount of people equals this amount of dollars, you know, like people equals dollars, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> and so that was probably like the toughest thing um, at first, but mm -hmm. we got through, you know, it's compromise, you know, have to compromise and say, you know, at the end of the day, it's fine. I actually want my people to be there, mm -hmm. you know, and the Lord just surrendered it to the Lord. And the Lord made it, you know, what it was supposed to be. It was beautiful. Yeah. So Do you feel like you got to practice submission in that area. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think, you know what, the word I would use with compromise okay. would be compromise. Okay. Like I had okay. to practice compromise. Like okay. there were things that I wanted, but it mm. was, I love him and I want him to also have the things that he wants. Mm. So this actually, even though it seems like it, seem, it may seem like it's a burden to me, I love him so much that I want, like, this is some, this is a day that he's going to remember as well for the rest of his life. I don't want him to have any regrets if he want people there that can't be there. So there was just some like give and takes, like, you know, he probably could have had more people and then he had to compromise with recognizing like, okay, what's feasible. Um, you know, so yeah, it was, I would say compromise. Okay. And then you all decided last minute, kind of last minute but not really last minute. You can tell a story about you invited your guests to participate in a fast uh, for your <laughs> wedding. So tell, oh, that tell us about that. So honestly, the funny part about it, guys, let me put myself on blast really quickly, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let me put myself on blast and not give me the credit for the fast, right? Like my thing is like to four, let us fast, of course, mm -hmm. us. To four was the one, the man of God was the one that was like, 
everybody, you know, let's invite everybody to Fest. And I was honestly a little nervous about sending out an email inviting the entire guest list to Fast. Like, I think I had conversations with him about it. Like, wait a minute, let's talk about this. Some people that are coming have not actually surrendered to Jesus. Maybe we should pick out like, uh, you know, maybe we should, maybe we should not do that. Like maybe we should actually just invite the wedding party. And I mean, he kept pushing it. Like he was, he was very serious about like giving people the opportunity to fast and putting it out there and letting people know the type of wedding that this was going to be, that this was going to be something that was going to be God honoring. We were expecting to experience the presence of God in a crazy way. And so he was really big, like felt very passionate about inviting everybody to do it. Mm -hmm. So that was the submission part. That was the part where I would say I had to submit like, okay, I don't necessarily see what he's seeing, but I believe that he's seeing something. And so because I believe that he's seeing something that the Lord may be showing him something that I might not have grasped and I submitted to what God was showing him when it came to the fast and it was very beautiful i mean we throughout the fast i believe we got together every day that we were fasting for the three days and welcomed people to pray and the to see people actually sacrifice to pray for someone else's experience that's not their own or someone else's marriage that's not their own the level of selflessness was inc i mean it was such a blessing to me it continued to confirm that like oh this is something that god himself is establishing mm -hmm. like the lord himself is doing this thing so it was so beautiful so god bless every single person that <laughs> you know sacrificed i mean it's it's like one of the most beautiful things that i could recognize in it that this was as unto the lord like it was not about me this was about jesus being glorified so amen and then the last question i'll ask on this topic is yeah where where did that initial heart posture come from because some people when they think about weddings they don't think about making creating an opportunity to glorify god right mm -hmm. it's about just whatever they want it to be about but where does that conviction and heart posture come from in you to say no this day has to be about jesus yeah I honestly like i've been taught in like and through the word and through relationship with with god that relationship really is about the representation and the demonstration of jesus's heart towards the church like jesus's relationship with the church and so I recognize that marriage is a God ordained, it's a God established thing. Like man did not actually create marriage. Man did not create this beautiful experience. Even when we, when we think of the wedding, all of this is about a union that is coming together, that is divine, that is established in heaven, that God himself has ordained before the foundation of the world. And so for me, honestly, it's, it's through relationship with God and him revealing to me his desire and his heart for marriage like before i had even got engaged or was even thinking about marriage well I'm probably i'm a you know i had been thinking about marriage but like before i was like really 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 like pressing in for it the lord had already shared with me like one of the strategies that a, a, a heavenly strategy for the days that we were entering into was the lord was restoring marriages he was opening up the wounds of the barren and he was seeing his people come together in holy matrimony and that this was these this was a strategy that the lord was using um to actually draw people closer to him and to for the world to see jesus mm -hmm. and so again the lord had been speaking to me about that before i had entered into this season and so it was honestly just through the communion with the Holy Spirit and the understanding that he had given me about what marriage means and like what it's for. Amen. 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 So God was just faithful. Like he gave you the peace that you were asking for. He was with you through the whole process. The wedding was beautiful. Aww. And in our next video, we're going to dive into more about the actual wedding and how God was glorified through it. And then we're also going to talk about married life. So yes. you guys make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, tell Tawana how you feel about this whole interview. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we'll see y'all next video. We love you. And God is good and God is faithful. Bye guys. Bye.